morning. Welcome to our worship service today. We're very glad to have you all here in the month of October. Um, our guests and visitors are always welcome here. We're glad to have you. You're always welcome to come back again. Please don't forget to sign our guest register in the entryway before you leave. And uh, we appreciate your presence today for everyone who's here. Our opening hymn this morning is the Hymn of Praise, page 54, but we'll have the words up here for this one, but it was also page 54. <coughs> against five kings. 
the king of Sodom, the king of Gomorrah, the king of Adma, the king of Zeboim, and the king of Bela, that is Zoar, went out and lined up for battle in the valley of Sidim against Kedor Laomor, king of Elam, title, king of Goyim, Araphiel, king of Shinar, and Arioch, king of Alassar. Four kings against five. Now the valley of Sidim was full of tar pits. When the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled, they fell there. Those who survived fled to the hills. The raiders took all the possessions of Sodom and Gomorrah and all their food, and then they went on their way. Because he had been living in Sodom, they took also Lot, the son of Abram's brother, and his possessions, and went away on their way. One person escaped and came and told Abram the Hebrew, who was living by the oaks that belonged to Mamre the Amorite, the brother of Eshcol and Aner. They were allies of Abram. When Abram heard that his relative was taken captive, he led out all his trained men who were born in his house, 318 of them, and pursued them as far as Dan. During the night, he divided his servants into groups to attack them. He struck them and pursued them to Hoba, north of Damascus. He brought back all the possessions. He also brought back his relative Lot and his possessions, and the women also and the rest of the people. After Abram's return from the defeat of Kedor Laomer, and the kings who were with him, the king of Sodom went out to meet him at the valley of Sheba, that is, the king's valley. Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was a priest of God most high. He blessed Abram and said, Blessed be Abram by God most high, creator of heaven and earth, and blessed be God most high, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. Abram gave him a tenth of everything. The king of Sodom said to Abram, Give me the people and take the goods for yourself. Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have lifted up my hand to swear to the Lord God most high, creator of heaven and earth, that I will not take a thread or a sandal strap or anything that is yours, so that you cannot say, I have made Abram rich. I will take nothing except that which the young men have eaten and the share belonging to the men who went with me, namely, Aner, Eshcol, and Mamre. Let them take their share. Here ends our Old Testament lesson. We'll continue now with Psalm 38, and that is on page 81 in the front of the hymnal, Psalm 38.
the epistle lesson this morning is from Paul's first letter to Timothy, chapter 6, verses 6 through 16. But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into the world, and we certainly cannot take anything out. But if we have food and clothing, with these we will be satisfied. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and many foolish and harmful desires which plunge them into complete destruction and utter ruin. For the love of money is a root of all sorts of evils. By striving for money, some have wandered away from the faith and have pierced themselves with many pains. But you, O man of God, Flee from these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, perseverance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of eternal <coughs> take hold of eternal life to which you were called, and about which you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. I charge you. <coughs> In the presence of God, who gives life to all things, and of Christ Jesus, who made a good confession as a witness before Pontius Pilate, that you keep this command without spot and without fault until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will make known at the proper time, the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, who lives in unapproachable light, whom no one has seen or is able to see, to him be power, honor, and power forever. Amen. Here ends our epistle lesson. Let's join together in the seasonal response. Alleluia. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Alleluia. We stand for our gospel lesson. The Holy Gospel is recorded in Luke chapter 16, verses 1 through 13. Jesus also said to his disciples, There was a rich man who had a manager who was accused of wasting his possessions. The rich man called him in and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Give an account of your management because you can no longer be manager. The manager said to himself, what will I do since my master is taking away the management position from me? For I am not strong enough to dig. I am ashamed to beg. I know what I will do so that when I am removed from my pos position as manager, people will receive me into their houses. He called each one of his master's debtors to him. He asked the first, How much do you owe my master? He said, Six hundred gallons of olive oil. He said to him, Take your bill, sit down quickly and write three hundred. Then he said to another, How much do you owe? And he said, Six hundred bushels of wheat. He said to him, Take your bill and write four hundred and eighty. The master commended the dishonest manager <clears throat> because he had acted shrewdly. For the children of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than the children of light are. I tell you, make friends for yourselves with unrighteous mammon, so that when it runs out, they will welcome you into the eternal dwellings. The person who is faithful with very little is also faithful with much, and the person who is unrighteous with very little is also unrighteous with much. So if you have not been faithful with unrighteous mammon, who will entrust you with what is really valuable? If you have not been faithful with what belongs to someone else, who will give you something to be your own? No servant can serve two masters. Indeed, either he will either hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and man. Here ends our gospel lesson. Please be seated as we continue with our next hymn. It's hymn number 452, 
Let us ever walk with Jesus. That's enough for one day. So we're going to focus on this story and the blessings that come to us. And so the theme of my message this morning is going to be use your blessings. Now this weekend is one of my favorite weekends because it is the cemetery walk weekend in Winona Woodlawn Cemetery and free promotion for them. As you go around listening to the different characters and actors at the different sites, one of the things that sometimes comes out is they will talk about this item cost this much. And then they will add, and for you people in your modern day, this would be worth so many thousands of dollars. And sometimes I wonder how they, you know, get that evaluation. 
Have they tried to inflate to make themselves look good or then later on deflate to reduce the risk of taxes? But it, it's just kind of an interesting concept that's there. The value from one time frame to the value of another time frame. We're going to go back even farther. Abram's time frame. Abram had been given what will eventually become Egypt. <laughs> Israel, the promised land. They've been rescued from Egypt already. And God promised that this is the place where the Messiah is going to be born. And he told Abram, pack up, move from where you are, and go to this new area. Now, this new area has a lot of inhabitants already. But Abram found a beautiful place for himself and for his nephew Lot. Sometimes I wonder why Lot was the one that got to come along, the nephew. And then sometimes I you know, just kind of remember Abram and Sarai were older. And they had no children yet. They'd been promised children, but that hadn't happened yet. And they were waiting and waiting and waiting. And so perhaps it is they took a special interest in their nephew and were very helpful in his <coughs> upbringing. And as he got older, they invited him to come along. There was a choice that needed to be made. Do you want to live by the rich grasslands, by the water of Sodom and Gomorrah, or more out in the wilderness, away from all of the cities and the temptations that are there? And Abram gave Lot his choice. And Lot chose to go by Sodom and Gomorrah. And Abram was out in the country. While he was there, the Lord continued to bless him, with great wealth and riches. Um, it wasn't necessarily monetary things that Abram had, but all the blessings that God gave him. And God blessed him richly. He had possessions. And then the bad times came for that whole area. Lot had been first living outside the city of Sodom, but now, in the God's word for today, he's in the city, he's one of the elders at the gate, he seems to have fallen temptation to the allure of richness and greed and the sinful lifestyle of the people there. And so he was a believer living among unbelievers and he was not making a change in the people that he was living with. And then there was the war. First war mentioned in the Bible. First time there's war. Uh, everything mentioned in the Bible is kind of first time lots of times. But here's the first recorded war in the Bible. And it's so short, you know, it's less than a sentence. It takes longer to describe all the participants than it takes to describe, oh yeah, they ran away. They ran away, they were defeated, and they lost everything, including Lot. And when Abram heard about this, he had an opportunity to say, Lot, you made your choice. It wasn't good. Now you're in a bad situation, and who can rescue you now? He had a choice to do that. But Abram realized that with his blessings, with his trust in God, he was going to use his possessions, and he first of all was going to use his blessings unselfishly. We're going to take our 318 men, some of the other men from the two tribes that are mentioned that are very, very close by, and we're going to chase an invading army and try to defeat them when they've already defeated the people of the valley that were there. 
And he decided to take that upon himself. And he went and followed. And his plan was, and he'd never been in battle before, we're going to attack at night. We're going to attack from a lot of different directions. Gideon's going to use part of that plan later on in the book of Judges. And the enemy was routed. They didn't know where all of these people were coming from that were attacking them. They couldn't see and recognize. And they thought the best thing to do is let's leave everything behind and save ourselves. But Abram used his possessions unselfishly. He might have been in danger of losing everything that he had, but God prompted and motivated him to use his blessings in a very unselfish way. Our scripture lessons you know, talk about uh, in the epistle as well as the gospel about the relationship with money and possessions and how dangerous that can become when they blot out God himself and all the blessings that God gives us. Martin Luther had said at one time that even the smallest coin, if you hold it up in front of one of your eyes, you can't see anything else. It's just that coin. It's blotting the big picture. And Abram was one who saw the big picture, trusted in his God because God had made a promise you are going to be a father of nations. You will have descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. So he trusted God that God would make that happen. And he went to rescue Lot. As he did so, that's what happened. He rescued, and then he was also in that action of using those possessions boldly, confidently, the Lord blessed the entire operation, the goods, and the people that had been taken away, had been left behind, and now they could return safely home thanks to what God had done through this tremendous victory over the four kings from a thousand miles away who had previously come to that area and totally conquered it before, and then had just now come again and conquered again, now they had been conquered, and they left. When Abram gets back, he has another chance to use his possessions. And here as he is confronted with the king of Salem, and his name was Melchizedek. And here we have one of the most unusual characters in the Old Testament scriptures. This is the only time that he will be mentioned in the Old Testament part of the Bible. He will be talked about two or three times in the New Testament. Melchizedek, a king of Salem, which is going to eventually going to be called Jerusalem, and he's also a high priest of God Most High. Where did he come from? How did he get there? As far as we can tell, Abram and his family were basically the only real believers and followers of the one true God. But now they found someone else who was also not just a believer and a follower, but a king and a high priest. And he was there. And Abram recognized and respected the position of this man, Melchizedek, king and high priest, and he thankfully gave him a tenth of everything that he had gained. The giving of the tenth hadn't been commanded yet. <clears throat> that's going to be something that's going to be later on when we get to Exodus. And yet already, innately, he knows this is what we do for our God. And wherever Abram went, whenever he arrived, he'd build an altar and he would worship that true God. And now he has found a kindred soul. Now this Melchizedek, king and high priest, he is pictured as an Old Testament type of Christ. 
Jesus is king. Jesus is high priest. And Jesus is also prophet. And this individual has two of those very important characteristics. And Jesus will fulfill them perfectly to make sure that our sins are paid for and to let us know that he's conquered sin, death, and the devil. And it all comes to us through the word. Using everything that we have. Unselfishly, boldly, thankfully. What great motivation for us in our own personal lives today that we take an account of all that we have, of all that we are. We're God's children. We're made in his image. God's blessed each of us personally with who we are. And so we use that to serve him. We use our possessions to serve him and to give and share with him in the work of the church. And we continue to, throughout our lives, make sure that that's a priority. That the things of this world are not making a shadow upon our eyes so that we can't see clearly. Now you'd think that Lot would have learned his lesson. Man, this was a bad situation and Abram came to rescue me from this. But he gets back and he goes right back to living in Sodom and Gomorrah. And it's going to be a couple chapters later that God's going to send two angels after a lot of bargaining to convince God not to destroy the city if there are as few as 10 believers in there. And there weren't. And the angels had to rescue him. And he would continue to serve throughout his life. Abram will grow in his faith. And Abram will eventually get the promise of a descendant. And that descendant will be one who will eventually be in the line for the Messiah himself, Jesus Christ. All the blessings that you can't just see today. Because many of those blessings for us are also in the future. We don't know where our next path might lead us? Will there be a next path? Will there be a detour on the one that we're on now? Will there be an end to our life here in this world? But there's always still the path. And God wants to reassure us that the path is being in heaven. Not because we'll have used our blessings unselfishly, boldly, and Thankfully, but because Jesus did all of that perfectly for us. And we're doing what we can to say thank you to him for everything that he's accomplished for us as individuals. Because he's chosen us, he's called us, he's called us by name. And made us a part of his family and a part of his kingdom forever. An Old Testament section that if you started with the first paragraph, you would quit because all those names are there and we're not good at Old Testament names. You could mention these names to me and maybe I would have a light go on for one or two of them, but not very many of them just because this is the paragraph, this is the place. But Melchizedek jumps out and Abram jumps out as well. May God bless us to use our possessions in the best way that we can in service to our God. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. We're going to continue now with a very familiar hymn that we have not sung since the pandemic began. began. And that is, we give thee but thine own, 485. You can stay standing for this one.
Please stand for prayer. Today we again have a special prayer on behalf of Kay Emmons. Uh, she continues to be at St. Anne's in Winona. There's a lot of COVID in the building and there's a good chance that she may have caught that as well. <coughs> Lord God, you call us to work in your kingdom and leave no one standing idle. Help us to order our lives by your wisdom and to serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you would be with Kay Evans. We know that you are the Almighty God, the Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and that your love never fails, and that you can turn the shadow of death into daybreak. Help us to receive your word with believing hearts, and be with Kay so that her confidence in your promises may continue to grow. May she always have hope and be lifted out of the darkness into the light and the peace of your presence through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you brought us safely to this new day. Defend us with your mighty power, and grant that this day we neither fall into sin, nor run into any kind of danger. And in all we do, direct us to what is right in your sight, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Praise be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. You may be seated today for our closing hymn. This is a hymn from the sampler. It's um, you know, one of the ones that are a little bit longer. So sit down and uh, get ready to sing 771. I want to walk as a child of the light. <laughs>
thank you all for coming here to be with us today. Uh, we're always glad to have you. Hope come back again soon. At this time, we're going to watch Wells Connection.